So the question today is, can we run a desktop environment on our server and do we really want to? And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Welcome to Technodad Life, and today what we're going to do is install a desktop environment in a Docker on our server and see if it's actually worthwhile. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is using the Linux server, our desktop Docker. And so the first thing we want to do is go to Linux server slash our desktop on Docker Hub. Scroll down. We're going to look at a few things. So, so first we're going to look at our supported architectures. And so th with this Docker, it should automatically download the correct image for your architecture, either x86 or ARM, which would be the Raspberry Pi. Next, if we go to the version tags, so these are the tags that we're going to be putting in for our different desktops that we want. And you can see here under latest, the desktop that will install is Xface Focal. What uh, I like is Mate, so we're going to install Mate Bionic. So we're going to use the tag on the left hand side to make sure we get that desktop. And if we scroll down further, this is the Docker Compose area where we're basically going to just copy this and then add and subtract a few things to it. In the parameters section, so basically what this tells us is this is the port that Windows will access our GUI on. Our PUID and our PGID, we'll show you how to do in a second. We're going to put in our time zone, leave that as is. Uh, add a config file for us. And so shim size is interesting. So shim size basically allocates how much room the Docker can take. So I'm running this on a low powered machine that just has two gigabytes of memory. So what I'm going to do is just leave it at one gigabyte. But if you have more memory available on your machine, then definitely up that to two gigabytes or more if you can. And then the last thing we need to look at is application setup. So first thing you'll notice is that our username and password is ABC ABC. So we have to remember that forever uh, for later. And then also uh, this container is not like a normal container in that you have to update it inside the container to actually update it. The first thing we need to do is go to portainer and we want to make sure we are on stacks. And then click add stack and then we're going to go back to Linux server and under the docker compose section we're just going to copy this whole thing go back to stacks paste that in and so the first thing we need to do is give this a name our desktop and now we'll go through the different examples here one by one so Version means the version of Docker Compose you're using. Services, so this image is our desktop from Linux server. The container name is our desktop. Uh, so we want to change this so it has Mate on it. So the first thing we do is put a colon. Go back to our version tags and we're going to copy this Mate Bionic. So next thing we do is paste that in next to our desktop. So next we want to find our PUID and our PU PGID. So we need to open PuTTY, type in our IP address, click open, log in as root and our password, and then type in ID and your username. Hit enter and here you can see my UID is 1000 and my GID is 100. PUID should stay 1000, PIG should go to 100. Next, enter our time zone. For me, it's America, New York. And then for uh, volumes, this is going to stay the same, the Docker volume. 
Here we need to add in a path to our config information. So we're going to go back to our back to putty, type in ls dash asl slash srv. And so in Open Media Vault, the shared folders are in under the SRV subfolder. So basically to find it, to find the name of our folders, we need to do that slash SRV. So we go back to our server. Again, we type in ls dash asl slash SRV, hit enter. Now here you can see on the right hand side, third line down, it says dev dash dish dash by label dash data. And so what we're going to do is highlight that and then paste that into, into a word processing program. And so then we can just paste it into our Docker. And then we want to add the slash serve on the front. So then we can copy that and then paste it right here. So we're not quite done with this. So we still actually have to put this in our app data folder. So after the this by label data, we want to hit in another slash and then put in app data and another slash and our desktop. And so now our, our desktop data will be stored in our app data folder in our desktop folder, which has a folder inside of name data. Simple but complicated. So next is the ports. And so this is the port where we'll be able to access our, our desktop. And for our situation, because I just have a server with two gigabytes, we're going to leave this at. And then under restart policy, uh, unless stopped, scroll down. We can unenable access control and then hit deploy. Now, this will take a few minutes to deploy uh, or basically download the Docker and then actually get it up and running. So, of course, have some coffee. Once that's deployed under stacks, you can see now it says our desktop. So if we go to containers, you can now see that our desktop is running and we can check on it by clicking on the little piece of paper there for logs. If we scroll down, you can see the services have started. So now we want to go down into the Windows search box, type in remote desktop, click on that. And then in this line, we want to put in the IP address of our server. So here you can see mine is 192.168.0.111. And that's what we have here in the remote desktop. So next we want to click connect. And here, if you remember the password or username is ABC and the password is ABC, then hit OK. Now here you can see that we're at the Mate desktop and just a few things here. So if you go to the menu, most of these things actually don't work. Uh, so you have to actually uh, download them to get them work. This is a very minimal install. If you want to update your system, you actually have to go to system tools, open a terminal, so to update your system, you're going to have to type in sudo app update ampersand ampersand app upgrade, and that will start upgrading your system for you. Now to add software, you basically have to do the same thing because it doesn't in the uh, actually menu, the software, the graphical software updater doesn't work. So you have to always do it from the command line, at least until you install that. So using Docker is an easy way to get a graphical GUI or interface on your server actually without ruining your server because under Open Media Vault, if you add too much desktop environment stuff, norm the normal way, then it tends to mess up things. But if you do it through Docker, you're pretty have you have pretty much unlimited ability to add different things that way make sure you like and subscribe and before you leave check out the new tdl coffee mug down below and we'll see you next time bye bye